that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can you praise God wherever you are and thank God for whom all blessings flow? For God is great and greatly to be praised. If God has done anything for you, can you lift up your hands wherever you are? Can you worship God wherever you may be and thank God today? For God is so good. God is so great and greatly to be praised from the rise going down of the same God's name is worthy to be praised. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you type in thank you Jesus for all that the Lord has done for you? If God has done anything for you this week, can you just give God some praise? Hallelujah Jesus. Thank you God for making ways out of no way. Thank you God for keeping me and my family. Thank you God for providing for me. Thank you God for being so good. y'all know he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. God, you've been so good. You've been so great. Your grace and your mercy are worthy to be praised. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. And we pray that your hand be upon this service today. That our worship is for real and that we not only be hearers of the word today God but doers of your word bless us now oh God and God we will be careful in all things to give you the glory the honor the thanks and the praise it's in Jesus' name we do pray amen amen, amen. amen. and amen. amen at this time we're going to open up in song like we always do let's give God some praise for the music ministry here at the old Baptist Church
other people around. We just know what God has done for us. And so here at New Hope Baptist Church, we are here today. Praising God. I'm telling you, it feels like I can't wait until social distancing is over because it feels good to be in church. I, I, I can't say it enough. It feels good to be in church because I don't know if there's something about God keeping you in the sanctuary. Don't worry. We, we got social distancing. People got masks going. Distance. But it just feels good to be in church. It feels good. I'm going to keep saying it. It feels good to be in church. I tell you. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We don't want to mislead anybody. Our doors are not open uh, due to inclement weather. We were led to come inside, but just, just myself in an amen corner. But it's good to have an amen corner. Amen. I will declare when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst also. So we thank God today. I want to thank God for our music ministry, for ushering in the Spirit of God. Amen. In a mighty way. I can tell he, he enjoys being back on that hand and over. So he enjoys being on the floor. This is our youth Sunday where we certainly thank God for our young people. Where, wherever you are, can we bless God for our young people? Amen. 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 Let us pray. We're about to hear the word of God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for who you are. We love you. God, if we can't find any other words to say it, God, we just want to express our love for you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us and, and the ways that you are making even right now. God, in the midst of our praise, in the midst of our worship, there is someone watching right now that needs you like never before. So, God, I pray that this worship speaks to their heart and to their situation. God, we're believing and trusting in God for great things. For, God, you have done great things for us, to us, and through us. So now, God, I ask that you preach to me, through me, and for me. For we need to hear a word from you. Thank you, God, for being so great. God, we don't have the words to express how great you are, but we give you the greatest praise. Hallelujah, God. And to God be the glory. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen. Amen. I want to thank all of our leadership here who's been flexible during this pandemic, during this season in which we've had to be able to be flexible, to shift whenever the Lord calls, causes us to shift. And so I thank God for that. I thank you for tuning in today and your support watching us online. For those that have been watching, we've been doing a sermon series entitled Let's Be the Church. Uh, it is an encouragement for us to honor God and be who God has called us to be. We've been going through the letter of James. And so today we're going to pick up at verse 22. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 22. We want to say happy birthday to all of those celebrating August birthdays. I see some of you watching right now. It's too many to name names, but we thank God for each and every one of you. We also want to continue to pray as we prepare for another school year, back to school drives and so many things. Let us continue to pray for this nation and this world. Amen. 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 James chapter one, beginning at verse 22. And I will try not to be long. I'm just going to say what the Lord gives us to say. Yeah. It says, but be doers of the word not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a the mirror. And they look at themselves and on going away, forget what they look like. Yeah. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. I want to focus on the key verse today one more time, verse 25, which says, But to those who look in the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, 
they will be blessed in their doing. For the few moments I have, I want to preach about just be about it. Just be about it. <clears throat> so many people talk about it, but they don't be about it. Don't talk about it, be about it. If you're going to talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. Amen. This text helps us for anybody who wants to be blessed. Anybody who wants to be blessed. I don't know who's watching that needs a blessing right now. I don't know anybody who doesn't need a blessing. But, yeah, yeah. but, but this text helps us if... You want to get blessed by God. There is a recipe. There is an instruction manual. There is a way to get blessed. And the Bible declares to get blessed by God, to be blessed, you have to be a doer of the word. You, you can't just be a spectator and, and be entertained by church and by God. But you have to actually take what you hear into action as a coach, as a teacher and as a pastor. There's nothing more frustrating than to give people great sound instruction. And they hear it, they cheer it, they celebrate, and then they walk away and don't take your advice. Amen. There's nothing worse than giving sound wisdom, sound advice, sound counsel, and somebody just taking the words and basically throwing it in the trash. Amen. One of the problems we have in the modern day church, we got a lot of spectators. They'll come to church Sunday after Sunday. They'll listen to the word. They'll hear the word, but they won't apply it to their lives. Or, or maybe certain scriptures don't apply to their lives. But I'm wondering, do I have anybody here today that is committed to the B-I-B-L-E? I'm going to live out God's word. I'm going to act on God's word. I'm not going to be just a hearer of the word, but I'm going to be a doer of the word. And you may be asking, well, Pastor Mac, what does that mean to be a doer of the word? I don't even know the word. Well, first, you got to know the word for yourself. Amen. You can't just listen to what everybody else tells you about the word of God, but you have to listen for yourself. And we are in an age well, people are attacking the authenticity of the Bible, the, the inerrancy of the Bible. People question whether or not it was written by man. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit inspired those hands. The Holy Ghost breathed those words upon people. The Holy Ghost is who is the author of the Bible. And if you don't like the Holy Ghost, then we got a whole nother issue. I'm not going to deal with that today. But, but for those that believe in God and know God's voice and love God, then you have to receive the Bible. And what are some things that you can receive? God has given us some clear commandments, but the greatest of all commandments is to love your neighbor as yourself and to love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. If you love God, then you ought to show God how much you love God by worshiping God. Just take a few moments. We've been saying, I love you, Jesus, all morning long, but can you do it for just 15 more seconds where you can tell God you love him? You can tell God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for putting clothes on my back. Thank you for putting food on my table. God, I love you so much. You've been so good. God, I can't thank you enough for how good you've been. But one of the other ways to fill out this greatest commandment and be a doer of God, but if you really love God, you also have to show up by how you treat other people. You, you can't say you love God, but then be nasty to your sister or your brother. You you can't really say you love God, but always be lying on people or gossiping about other people or talking about other people. If you really love God, it shows in how you treat people. But before we get into that, that's a great point that we should lift up in every day of our living. But before we get to that, the, one of the things that James teaches us is that there are people who lie to themselves. There are people who are fraudulent to themselves about their relationship with God and how 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 much they love God. They they come to the show. They come to listen. They come to be entertained, but they don't want to place it in their lives. Yeah. And I'm challenging each and every one of you today. How much do you not live out the word of God? How, how much do you hear the word of God and ignore what the preacher is saying to you? How much do you know, get convicted and feel God stepping on your toes and say, but not today? I, I know you have pleasures of this world, but those pleasures don't outweigh the promise that God has for you. Don't 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 let short temporary things 
distract you from the word of God and the promise and the blessings that God has for you in here. I, I tell you, there's nothing that any man or woman can give you that can outweigh the blessings and the favor of God. I, I wish I had a few people that know that what people can give you is temporary, but what God gives you is forever. And what God gives you is better than anything anybody else can give you. And in fact, some of us have lost some things along the way, but God not only replaced, God upgraded. And can we thank God for God being one who can provide and meet all of our needs and do better than anyone else? And here James is teaching us here, in order to be the church, you can't just listen. See, part of the problem during James's era is there were many people who would come to hear Jesus, but then the disciples would go with him but a whole bunch of other people would walk away. The crowd came to be entertained by the miracle signs and wonders, but they didn't really want to do God's word. And I, I wish we didn't have that problem today. But likewise, in the modern day church, we have some folk that come to truly be disciples, truly live out God's word. But then we got some hypocrites that make it hard for the rest of us to live out God's word. There, there's some people who, who don't want to do what God is telling them to do, and they make it hard for the rest of us. But let me tell you something. For those who are living out God's word and truly being disciples, don't you let other people bring you down, and don't you grow weary in well-doing. For the Bible declares that that you shall reap a harvest in due season. And you're not doing what you do for them, but you're doing what you do for him. I wish I had a few people that know that all that you do is for the glory of God. It's not for no Negro or no Negro. Act. It's not about people, but all that you do is for the glory of God. So James warns us not to just be hearers who are lying to ourselves, but James lets us know that actions Speak louder than words. Yeah. Somebody tells you they love you, but they're never there on special days. They never show you affection. They never buy you anything. That, that's not real love. They, if, if they aren't there for you when you need them most when you're hurting, that's not real love. That's lip service. I like how I learned as a young person, you can't be a shook one. You can't be a halfway Christian. You can't halfway be a child of God. You got to be all in. And that means I'm not just going to hear the word, but I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And so here, here James is telling us, don't lie to yourself. You can lie to other people, but you can't lie to yourself. But, but for those who are not just listeners of the word of God, but actual doers of the word of God. The word of God is liberty. Yes, is. He's suggesting that, that it is deliverance in listening to the word of God. So don't, don't just lie to yourself, but receive liberty, freedom, and deliverance. I believe I'm preaching to some people that can testify. I may not be everything I used to be. I don't do everything I used to do. And you can thank God today that you don't go to the same places. You don't deal with some of the same people. You don't deal with some of the same situations. But you found what you needed in the word of God. And you found strength and comfort in the word of God. And God has given you liberty. Don't you know you can have peace in the midst of a pandemic because you trust in God? Even when people are laying other people off on your job, you can still have comfort in knowing that God will provide and meet all your needs. I believe true Christians can have liberty and freedom and deliverance from sin and situations. I'm going to say that again. This liberty is from sin. I'll, I'll go even further. From Satan, sin, and self. Yes, self, because some of us, the biggest enemy we have is ourselves. Some of us have to pray the prayer, Lord, help me from me. And here, James is promising, if you stay in the word of God, if you continue to read the word of God, it will deliver you from those temptations that you cannot control. But not only does it deliver you from uh, temptation, but it also touches your tongue. He says a true religion, Christianity, should, should be able to tame or bridle its tongue. Proverbs 18 teaches us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
And some of us have been so guilty of speaking negativity and tearing our own selves down by what we say. But when you can speak life into your situation, when you can speak hope into your situation, God honors what you say and how you live if you are willing to speak the truth in love and speak positivity. Somebody watching right now or listening right now needs to speak hope over their situation. Say, I believe God in the midst of my trials. I I believe God is going to make a way out of nowhere. If you believe God in the midst of whatever you're going through, can you proclaim? it right now saying thank you God in advance for what you're getting ready to do God I believe you in the midst of my situation God I trust you in whatever's going on so be about it good Christians don't don't just be a game day Christian that shows up to church on Sunday but Monday through Saturday you 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 don't live the life don't don't be somebody who just shows up when it's when it's convenient and you can take pictures. I, I, I don't like those secret squirrel saints that, that are secret and in hiding all day, every day throughout the week. But then when it's time to be on a video or when it's their time to sing a solo, they want to be front and center. Don't, don't keep being an in-the-closet Christian, but be a doer of the word where people see you and they see the light of God within you. Don't be a fake and phony Christian, but be a doer of the word. And here is another example of how you can be a doer of the word. Not only does it touch your tongue, but it helps you to care for other people. Yeah. In the Bible, it says, one who cares for the orphans and the widows, those who are distressed. So I ask you this question today. When's the last time you did something for somebody else? When is the last time you helped somebody and you didn't have selfish motives? When is the last time the Holy Spirit led you to be a blessing to somebody else? Don't, don't be so high and mighty in your fancy suit that you can't help somebody else. Don't, don't be so highfalutin that you can't be a blessing to somebody else. In fact, one of the greatest indicators and signs that you've been blessed is that you want to be a blessing to somebody else. I, I wish I had a few witnesses who could testify that God has blessed me in such a way that I want to be a blessing to somebody else. God, God has overflowed blessings in my life that I want to be a blessing to somebody else. God has been so good to me that I want to come down and help somebody else. Don't you know that's what Christianity is all about? Because Jesus was seated on the throne, but he came down to bless people who couldn't bless themselves. I wish I had a few witnesses here that could thank God for Jesus Christ coming down and dying for the sins and paying the debt that we could not pay, that sacrificed it all on a cross on a hill called Calvary. But he, even though he died and was willing to pay the price, he got back up again. And likewise, true Christians, real believers and doers of the word, don't worry about when you feel knocked down in life. Because the same way Jesus got back up, the same way Jesus raised Lazarus, God will pick you back up again. I wish I had a few witnesses that could thank God for those moments in life where he picked you back up again. And you can say, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in because I'm a doer of the word. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm a listener. I'm not just a listener, but I'm also an action person. I do what God tells me to do. And because I do and trust what God tells me to do, God takes care of me. If God takes care of you, if God has taken care of you, can you praise God wherever you are? My brothers and sisters, I'm wearing this shirt. You may be wondering why, because the Bible is full of recipes for survival. The, the Bible is powerful. We've got too many people walking and talking, but not doing. Too many people not finding comfort and security in the word of God. The word of God has an answer to any problem you have. My shirt shows quite a few problems that it can solve. It's a recipe for your life. I ain't going to spend time on all of it. But depression, danger, feeling weak, feeling like an outcast, trouble at work, financial troubles, struggling with loss, whatever you need, inner peace. God's got it. Whatever you need, God will provide. But you can find it in the word of God. 
So my brothers and sisters, let's stop playing church. Let's stop playing Christians. But let's be doers of the word. God will bless you beyond measure. Don't be like the type of person that will look at themselves in the mirror and by the time they get in the car, forget what they look like. You, you don't want to deal with spiritual dementia. You, you, you want to be faithful and consistent in your lifestyle. One, one of the problems people have with the church is they see people coming out with their fancy suits, shouting and praising God and be mean as a rattlesnake. Don't let that be you. Love God. Love people. Fulfill God's commandments. Honor your father and your mother. Don't covet or be jealous of a neighbor. What they have is what they have. That don't mean it's for you. Be thankful for what you got. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't, don't commit adultery. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God has given us instructions. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. And God will take care of you. There may be one watching today. Who says, well, Pastor J. Mac, I, I, I don't even have a Bible. Send us a message. I'll send you one. You can download the Version app on your phone, the Bible app. And it's got devotionals you can read every day. But we want to be the church. And to be the church, that means we have to be doers of the word. We want you to be a part of our family. Maybe you're saved, but you, you, you need a church home. We'd be happy to be your church home. We, we love God. We don't claim to be perfect, but we serve a God that works with imperfect people. And God is the epitome of perfection. He's our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer. He wants you to embrace him with open arms. He'll receive you with open arms. And you may not be there yet. You say, Pastor, well, I got a few things, especially that tongue. That tongue is problematic for a lot of people. Maybe you don't cuss, but maybe you, you have a problem gossiping. God can help you. Maybe you don't always tell the truth. God can help you. But you got to be willing to put it in God's hands. I love you with the love of Christ. We're going to get one more song before we go. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I know it was an adjustment, but I, I tell you, it felt good to be in this sanctuary one more time. Thanks for coming out. God bless you. Have a great week.